Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. I can't believe the holidays are right around the corner, and I'm so pumped we get to share them together for the first time on GMM. I mean, we got Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Diwali, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas, all coming our way, even Boxing Day, and it's about to be a super fun time. But first, let's start with today's news, all right? It's November, and Nintendo is plotting. They're planning, and they're dropping hints for their next big 3D Mario game, and we gotta discuss, because you know I love me some Mario. Plus, Nintendo talking about how long the Switch is going to exist for, and it may surprise you what they have planned ahead. We also have next year's brand new open world Sonic games starting to take shape and become more real than ever before, and Pokemon Crystal. Well, sort of, but Pokemon Crystal. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Wars. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoy the videos. Your support means the world to me and my happy beating heart. And let me know in the comments down below what y'all think about today's topics. Now, I want to kick it off with Sega, even though I was more of a Super Nintendo fan. Anyhow, Sonic is back, or at least he will be soon. We know that Sega is planning a big, bold new Sonic game for next year. They were celebrating his anniversary this year with Sonic Colors back on on Switch, pretty good time, had some problems. But now we know that they have trademarked Sonic Frontiers, all right? Sonic Frontiers sounds familiar. Actually, I covered this months ago when there was leaks that play tests for Sonic Frontiers were happening. And the Reddit post said that Sonic Frontiers was going to be a big, open world, almost Ubisoft style Sonic game with like towers and bosses and that it was pretty rough. Now, I think that the idea sounds intriguing. I think they could do some cool things. I like the idea of like Breath of the Wild Sonic, and I'm hoping it leans more that way than it does like Far Cry Sonic, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm sure this one will reveal itself soon. And basically, we're just putting like two and two together. The name from the leak months ago was Sonic Frontiers. They've trademarked Sonic Frontiers. Makes sense that they'd want to go bigger and more open. The leak said bigger and more open. Frontiers, frontiers open, frontiers are open. Like this just all adds up and now I fully believe that leak. Like we're gonna get this big bold Sonic game next year and I expect to see it pretty darn soon. Is it a Game Awards reveal? Is it a Nintendo Direct reveal? Is it a Sega Twitter post reveal? I don't know. But the prospect of Sonic being really good again is intriguing. Although I'm always suspicious with this franchise because Frankly, I feel like it's never really lived up to its potential, at least in the last couple of decades. Can they do it? Let me know in the comments down below if you think Sonic Frontiers could be the one that really takes Sonic straight to the top. Now, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are coming out quick, but what about Pokemon Crystal? Well, it's not a game, it's like legitimately Crystal Pokemon. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise, this company from France, the crystal manufacturer Baccarat, is creating Crystal Pokemon. And oh my goodness gracious, these are some of the priciest collectibles you could ever purchase. Let's start off on the low end. They've got this Pokeball and this Pikachu for $410 and $440. They're about six inches tall for Pikachu, three inches tall for the Pokeball. Still quite pricey, but Nothing compared to the $25,000 12-inch Pikachu, and they're only making 25 for the 25th anniversary. So if you are somehow a big baller who loves Pokemon and you're all about Pika Pika, you got this real nice crystal thing coming your way. $25,000, actually, please don't buy it. That is insane. $25,000 for a crystal Pikachu that will stand there and probably one day tip over and crack. Your kid will want to hold it and you'll be like, oh my gosh, Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. And he'll be like, Pika, and then shatter into one trillion pieces. Now the cool cats at Nintendo had a big briefing recently. That's where we got a lot of fun sales data and interesting comments, but the Q&A has now been translated. And oftentimes the Q&A is where some of the most interesting info comes out of. Now in this one, Furukawa is talking about the life cycle of the Switch. The head honcho trying to really kind of let people know that this thing ain't going anywhere. The Switch is here to stay. And we talked about like their next system, but is their next system another Switch or is the next system something totally new and different? Well, listen to what Furukawa says and give me your take. He says it is now the fifth year since the launch of Nintendo Switch and the total hardware sell through has exceeded 90 million units. We recognize that the system is at the midpoint of its life cycle the midpoint of its life cycle. Five years in, some systems would be sunsetting. They would be doing the do 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 like the, the wave, goodbye, see ya. Put out your last best game, but no. Furukawa says the Switch at the midpoint 
He says, with this, we believe a foundation for growth has been laid that exceeds what we previously considered to be a conventional hardware life cycle. He notes that they've already had three Switch models and you better believe there's gonna be more. If Mr. Furukawa and Nintendo want this thing to double its current life cycle and go to 10 years, it's not over with OLED, all right? And Nintendo's next system is inevitably going to be another Switch iteration. Look, I'm sure that they're planning on what is going on after Switch, like post-Switch world. They're probably planning and researching developing, but you better believe that the next thing that comes out from Nintendo on the hardware front is going to be a new and improved Switch. There's no way the OLED and the light can carry this thing all the way until 2026 or seven. That just ain't happening. So all those rumors and all those leaks and all the speculation about a 4K switch, th I, I don't know how it doesn't happen in the next couple of years, okay? Like Furukawa clearly wants this thing to just stretch. And it makes sense, the switch is so successful, we love the switch. And the best part of that is for you and I, we don't have to lose our library. Right, you don't have to upgrade. You can upgrade, you don't have to. The best part of an elongated cycle is that you are safe, your dollars have been well spent. Typically, your 300 bucks, it, it kind of goes out the window after like five, six years. Now, they're saying that you can basically keep it and extend the life cycle of your purchase for double that, which is really great. And by the end of this 10 years, imagine what the games will be like. I mean, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out at the midway point. Nothing to say that Breath of the Wild 3 couldn't come out by the end point. Inevitably, we'll get another Mario Kart and we'll get more Mario. This is really good, I think. Let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the Switch not going away. Also, like, pretty good for Switch Force. People always worried about, we'll have to change the name, but man, if Nintendo just keeps this thing rolling for 10 years, I am totally in the clear. Hi, Harley. You love to ring the bells. Are you excited about Switch lasting for 10 years? All right, let's dig a little bit deeper and talk about the main man who is the centerpiece of every Nintendo hardware generation, Mario. Now by some accounts, Mario is missing. He's taking an oddly long time to have his next game come out. We usually see a three or four year gap between Mario 3D Adventures and we're already at four. Odyssey released at the end of 2017 and we're nearing the end of 2021 and there ain't no Mario in sight. Now we have had a number of Mario games to kind of bridge the gap, but Miyamoto is now talking about the next Mario. And I don't know that you can go more than five years without a new mainline Mario. So 2022 could be crazy for both Link and Mr. Mustache. Now Miyamoto had some interesting things to say, and I don't know how you're gonna feel about it. I guess it depends how we interpret his words, but hear this one out. He's talking about the difference between 2D and 3D Mario and how they kind of wanted 2D Mario to simplify itself and become accessible for everyone. He talks about how they had the development of the Wii game, New Super Mario Bros, which was released in 2009. At the time, it felt like each time we created a new installment in the Super Mario series, which by then had expanded into 3D, it became more complicated. After the release of Super Mario Galaxy, the goal was to develop a more accessible 3D Super Mario game, and the result was New Super Mario Bros Wii, a basic side-scrolling Super Mario game, which really, isn't 3D, I guess the character models are 3D, but 2D game. And then he talks about, they even went simpler with Super Mario Run on mobile. Now he's talking about Mario Odyssey and says, recently people of all generations have been enjoying the 3D Mario game, Super Mario Odyssey released in 2017. So for 3D Mario going forward, we want to try expanding further in new ways. But I gotta fill you in on one more sentence he did speak, which goes like this. When we develop software, we strive to incorporate new elements, but at the same time, we want to make it easy for even first time players to have fun. Now he's noting how with the Switch, tons of different types of players played Mario Odyssey. And so the next one, they want to expand things further in new ways. This is right after he talks about the devolution of 2D Mario into something as simple as Super Mario Run. And I am sitting here like, hoping that Nintendo doesn't really reduce the complexity of Mario Odyssey to something more basic. By a lot of accounts, Mario Odyssey is a very complicated Mario with all the cappy elements. It can become very cool and a lot of different controllable characters. In other ways, you could say that the game is a little bit simpler with easier moons to collect and many of them scattered around the entire world. So what is Miyamoto hinting at for the next Mario that by all accounts should be shown next year? I mean, I'm here to say, I think we see the next mainline Mario in 2022. But clearly since Miyamoto interprets 3D Mario differently than I interpret 3D Mario, maybe the next Mario is gonna be a side scroller once again. Now, if they're gonna go 2D, they better drastically change things up. I'm talking new art style, new gameplay, maybe even a new group of characters. 
3D though would be the preference and I do think that's where they go. Mario Odyssey 2 makes the most sense and I hope that they're able to incorporate elements from Bowser's Fury into Mario Odyssey. Now does that complicate things or simplify things, right? An open world Mario Odyssey that is more interconnected than what we had in the original, do you view that as complicated or as simple? I would say that level-based Mario is usually more easy to understand and world-based Mario is a bit more diverse and I guess hardcore. I really hope that Nintendo decides to make things accessible, maybe with another Bowser Jr. type mode where you can kind of co-op your way through the adventure and just ping power-ups whenever you need them. I loved having the bar to collect as many power-ups as you saw fit in Bowser's Fury, and perhaps that's a way that they can incorporate sort of the accessibility without sacrificing what we find really fun about the big, bold 3D Mario adventures. But Nintendo sometimes does crazy things, and I'm worried given the context Miyamoto just expressed, going from Mario to Mario Galaxy to New Super Mario Bros to Mario Run, what are they cooking for the next iteration of Mario on Switch. They're approaching 100 million possible players. Odyssey did super well, so will we get the Galaxy 2 equivalent for Odyssey 2? Or will they go in a crazy bonkers direction that we can't quite predict? Like I said, I think we'll be seeing it soon, but let me know in the comments down below what direction you want them to take for the next Super Mario game on Switch. Yes, we've had Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe on Switch, and yes, we've had 3D All-Stars on Switch, and yes, we've had 3D World Deluxe on Switch. A lot of Mario action, but in terms of new Mario, we still are waiting, and we're due. 2022 is gonna be oh so interesting. It's also interesting to hear more about all of you. That's why I love these polls and sometimes the silly questions I ask you. Make sure to check the community tab every weekday evening to find out what I'm talking about today. We asked about snow, all right, because I just moved and I kind of removed snow from my life cycle. Do you get snow where you live? And shockingly, 43% of you live in warm climates. No snow. I'm very interested by that. I figured it would be kind of the opposite. Now only 24% of you say you get a lot of snow and 33% say you get some snow. Now I'm not against a little bit of snow and I do like it for time to time. And I've kind of oscillated back and forth in my life between like cold climate and warm climate and four seasons and one season. And I kind of am in that stage where I'm flipping back to a one season life where everything is just nice and sunny and relaxing. But I do know a snowy day can have its own merits. Your tea, your book, your switch a nice deep breath and a wonderful relaxation. I hope that this video brought you a little bit of calm in your day. It's obviously super fun to talk Switch, but hopefully a nice little reprieve from whatever you got going on. Make sure you're staying safe, staying healthy, staying happy, staying positive out there. I love and appreciate you all so much. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out. And until next time, my friends, thanks again. Switch Force, out.